Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, how much longer will LeBron be able to play at an elite level? Plus, power star Omari Hardwick joins the show to discuss the NBA Finals. And is Dak Prescott in for a rude awakening this season? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. LeBron is set to play in his ninth NBA Finals tonight. He's dominated this postseason, averaging 34 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists per game, all at the age of 33. And apparently, LeBron doesn't see himself slowing down. Let's take a listen. They've always kind of talked like the, the NBA prime is like, uh, you know, you know, 27 to like 31, 32. You know, and that's, you know, if you're lucky, you get to that to that point. Um, I, I don't know. I've just I've just never really, you know, bought into that. I never bought into like a ceiling either. You know, like you guys always talk to me about, you know, what you're selling. And I've always, um, you know, kind of told you guys that I don't I don't really have a ceiling. I want to just try to maximize, um, you know, as much as I can and, um, you know, be as, as good as I can. Shannon, how much longer can he play at this level? I believe he can play at the level that he's playing at right now currently, probably two years. And then even a, a year after that, I still believe he can be a top 10 player. Um, I think what's happening, Skip, is that with the advent of nutrition and training and, and, and what guys know now, guys not only do they enter into their prime sooner, they get to stay there longer. And if you take football, Skip, quarter, you see these quarterbacks, you see Brady, you see Manning, you see Breeze, because they play a position and the way they play it athleticism is not required so they get the you know they use more of their mind but as a skill position player every once in a while you'll get a Jerry Rice that can play 20 years at a skill but as your skill your athleticism starts to t- deteriorate you can't play at that level LeBron James realized and Michael Jordan Kobe realized this Michael Jordan said you know what there's a good chance as I start to age I'm not going to be able to take off from the free throw line Kobe's like, you know what? I'm not going to be able to be as acrobatic as I once was in my early 20s. So let me develop something else. They went to that fallaway jumper. They got better at their footwork game. And so now they could do other things than glide through the air. So they were able to stay at the top of their game for a lot longer than what we had seen previous athletes. Mm -hmm. We've never seen anybody like LeBron James. So basically he's Magic Johnson with Karl Malone's body. Mm -hmm. So and where he was always only just freight training his way to the uh, basket, He's like, you know, he went that offseason, he worked with Akeem Olajuwon. He worked on his footwork. And so now, that turnaround skip. You see him had that thing going against Toronto. He had it going against Boston. And when he gets that going, hey, all you do is just look at your coach. Mm. I got nothing. And he's improved his uh, his three-point shot. So, Skip, with the way he spends and the way he takes care of his body, estimated somewhere between $1.5 and $2 million a year annually. Skip, he's spending more on his body than, say, what, 10, 15 years ago, guys made in salary. That's true. So they couldn't spend that kind of money. And a lot of time, it's getting better, Skip. Uh, Technology is getting better. What we know, how we treat certain things, and knock on wood. He's never, ever had an injury that put him down for any substantial amount of time. Mm -hmm. We know as guys, Magic started pulling his hamstring Mailman started having problems with his knees. Guys start having problems. But through a blessing of God and the way he trains and the way he takes care of himself, Skip, he's been able to avoid that. So I believe he can stay right where he is currently for another two years. And then you'll start to see all of a sudden he'll be a top five, top ten player. But I believe for two more years, he can be the LeBron James Mm. that we see right now. Also depending on where he goes because he might go somewhere where this LeBron James is not needed. That's true. Very possibly. I'm going to hit your last point first about his durability. He is the most durable superstar athlete I have ever seen in all of my career. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to also knock on wood mm-hmm. because it... it Defies it, lot. It, it, there's no it reason also, it should... It, it scares me to hear him even talk openly about it because you don't dare those injury gods mm-hmm. or whichever, however, what, what you want to believe in because mm-hmm. sometimes it can happen completely out of your control where I say, that's unfair, right. and I'm going to knock on wood one more time. He's been blessed, and he said he's been blessed with to, to be available. Yeah. Okay? Well, he has. Because Larry Nance fell into his knee, Skip. That was game pretty, scary. Yeah. pretty scary. Yeah. scary. And, and he limped away from it, and then he seemed fine. Ask Steph Curry. He had the yeah, same thing. I agree. McGee fell in- Kevin Durant a year ago. He had the same thing. And, law, and I don't know, he missed like Steph 30 M- games. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, 
knock on wood the third time, I, I hope he can just last that way. Because if you don't ever have a major injury, you're so far ahead of the game. Right. And obviously, each new generation of athlete is figuring out how to last longer than the previous generation yes. lasted. And he's got it all down to a science, science not to mention vibranium, which is it's new on the market, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, you go to Wakanda and get that. It's, it's a yeah. big deal, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. So the other thing LeBron has figured out, and the reason I think he can last even longer than you think at this high level, he's playing the best offensive basketball of his career. It's not even close, thanks to your turnaround you talked about. Mm -hmm. It's almost Jordan-esque because Michael had to get a resort to that at mm -hmm. the sort of the, the winter of his career. Kobe. Yeah, Kobe had to. <laughs> but LeBron now does pick his spots. He now rests on defense when he feels like he can get away with resting. Right. Well, I've never seen anybody do that because back to Michael Jordan, at 34, a year older than LeBron is now at 33, Michael made first team all defense. So he was fighting his tail off on the defensive end. He was not picking his spots. And all the way to that closeout game six at Utah, the greatest game he ever played, he had four steals in that game. So obviously he was fighting hard on defense, including the the game-turning steal at the end of the game that led to his game-winning shot. Mm -hmm. But LeBron has learned to pick his spots. He was 309th during the regular season in individual defensive win shares. He's now 41st in the playoffs. Not bad, but it's not. Le LeBron, if he chose to, he could be top five. If he chose to. I still think he's capable of being a top five defender. But he's saying, no, I don't want to waste myself. I don't want to spend myself on defense. And the other thing that LeBron has done Occasionally, he'll just take a break. Like a year ago, he just took a break, and I think he went to Miami for That was his first days. year back. That yeah. was his first year back in two Cleveland. Years, two years ago. But, yeah. but he'll do this on occasion where he just says, I need to recharge. Okay, fine. So he's not missing because of injury the way most guys do. He just needs to take a break. Okay, fine. So he's picked his spots well, which is why at the rate he's playing defense or not playing defense going forward, I, I don't see how he can't play for four more years at this offensive level, which but, is sensational. But here's the thing, Skip. The difference between when Le what LeBron doing now and with Jordan, they didn't have this amount of possessions. So the game is faster. The game is sped up. He's doing more. Nobody's had the workload because, remember, he's the only guy to lead his team in scoring and assists for 15 straight years. That's eight more than anybody that we could even think of. So he's asked to do more. So he can't generate that workload. Go out there, sit in the chair for 41 minutes. I and don't know about that. No, Skip, nobody's but doing that. But I can that. show you. Michael had the ball in his hands more than LeBron, consistently had it because his usage rate was consistently higher than LeBron. But here's the thing, though, Skip. He's just looking to score the basketball. Right, that's what okay. Jordan was doing. LeBron is looking to get guys better shots. Scottie Pippen was leading the team in assists. So when you yep. – and, and you have – uh, uh, Dennis Rodman averaging 15, 16 rebounds a game. Mm -hmm. I mean, if LeBron says, you know what, I know Kevin Love's going to get me 15 or 16 a game. Or I know uh, 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 Tristan, Double T is going to get me 15 or 16. So now all I need is two to three. Mm -hmm. That changes the dynamic. If you remember game three in Boston, Skip, those guys came out playing well. You see how LeBron was playing defense when he realized, he I don't have to worry about getting all these rebounds. I don't have to worry about gather, gathering all these assists. So now I can give you a little bit more effort on the defensive end. But when you're I thought he set the tone from the yeah. tip on defense. But when you play 46 minutes mm -hmm. and you play 48 minutes and you got to give them 46 and, and 35 mm -hmm. and 15 and 12 and 9, you're not sitting in that chair for 48 minutes on both ends of the floor. Nobody, they hadn't made him yet. Even Braun on Vibranium. And mm -hmm. he's full, he's stopped and ready to go. Because like I said, I believe he's going to average somewhere between 35 and 40 with a triple dub to bring yeah, but, us home. But you, but you underestimate how hard it is to score 45 points the way Jordan did and play defense in game six at well, Utah. If, well, if all you got to do is just play de if score point, now, because Jordan... It takes a lot of effort and energy when you're beating two defenders to the rack. That's what, think about what he's doing. And, and most of his... You're, you're like, well, why is he so gassed? Because he's not getting his points as efficient and as effortless as Steph Curry or Kevin Durant. Because one step to the side, and here goes Kevin Durant raising up over everybody. Steph Curry's running off. Now, Steph is running. Steph is not playing any defense. Clay Thompson has the toughest assignment. Oh. The, the hardest. Oh, but in playoff defense, Steph's ranked second in the whole playoffs. Yeah, that's because that's because of Clay. I mean, if you if you guard the third best, fourth best player, he ain't guard the best player. He I, I thought Steph played James Harden pretty well. 
they kept, kept getting switched off. They kept him in pick and roll. They kept him mm-hmm. winning that. Mm-hmm. And that's how the Cavaliers beat him. The Cavaliers kept like whoever Steph Curry was guarding, that's who Kyrie and LeBron put in the pick and roll. Well, obviously he would be the weaker link. Yes. I, I don't think he's a weak link on defense. He's just not as good as Clay or Draymond but, on defense. And that's the thing. But Skip, if you really look at it, none of these guys are playing. I don't care who you are. If you're the best player, these top, t- let's say the top 10 players, be it AD, KD, Braun, Giannis, mm-hmm. whomever you want, nobody can stop them when they want to do what they want to do. You just try to contain and try to limit as much damage as you possibly can. That's what makes them great, Skip, because they can go one-on-one and take any game over at any given time. And so LeBron being able to do this, like I said, knock on wood, he hasn't been hurt, uh, hurt, Skip. They take better care of themselves. These top guys are not burning the candles at both ends. I don't think. Now, some of them might do a little something. Now, LT, how LT was able to do what he did and still do what he, and raise hell as much hell he did on the Lawrence, field, Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. How he was able to do that, Skip, and, and close the bar down, sweep the club up, and then go straight to practice and still raise heck on the uh, practice field and give it to you on Sunday. Mm. But these guys now, Skip, they know more. They eat better. They take better care of themselves. They got hyperbaric chambers. A lot of these guys, they probably sleep in that thing. They, uh, you know, Tiger has his whole house hyperbaric proof. So he's like he's in, in Vail, Colorado yep. every single day. And that's what these guys are doing. They're spending the amount of money that guys made in salary to take care of themselves. And so now they're going to play longer and they're going to be better. And with LeBron's ceiling, we didn't know what Jordan's ceiling was. So everybody says, okay, what's your ceiling? Everybody wants to say, well, this is how the best did it at his position, so this is what he can be. Bronze said, nah, y'all ain't ever seen nobody like me. Yeah, but with Jordan, the reason we don't know his ceiling is I thought he had his greatest all-around year at age 34, and then he didn't play when he was 35, 36, mm-hmm. 37, and came back at 38, 39, 40. Well, that year Who he knows? had, that, I don't know, Skip, that year he had averaged 37. I don't know if you'll ever see a performance like, I mean, well, I'm he's just talking about first team all <laughs> oh, yeah. defense. Yeah. Plus, yeah. yeah. So you, you brought up those quarterbacks. There is that guy up in Foxborough yeah. who just won the MVP of the National Football League at age 40, and his team is still picked to win next year's Super Bowl with a defense that's ranked by some services as 17th best in the league. So that's all on Tom Brady. But here's the right? thing, though, Skip, is that because Tom Brady has never relied on athleticism, he'll it's more likely that he plays until he's 41, 42, 43, as opposed to Cam Newton, who relies more so on athleticism than, say, just throwing the ball from the pocket and the, his style of play. So t- if I believe Tom, I believe Peyton Manning, had he not had that neck injury, I believe Peyton Manning would still be playing football right now, Skip. But I thought he should have played another year as it was. He, he couldn't. The, 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 he got everything. I mean, basically at the Super Bowl, Joy, he ran out of gas in the fourth quarter with a minute to go. And it just so happens C.J. Anderson ran the ball into the end zone. That was He was on fumes, Skip. He had nothing left. Okay, just remember, though, these quarterbacks take shots. Yeah. And, and obviously Cam, because he's going to run outside the pocket, he's right. going to take more shots than Tom Brady is. Right. But Tom Brady takes shots, man. Yeah, but just imagine, Skip, if he had to run 4-4 like receivers need to no. be. Especially when it's, they were quite – they're speed guys and they, they – re- didn't build up anything else. You see, here's the thing. Remember, we talk about Dez. He's still unsigned. When he was younger, he was so athletic. Yep. All the 50-50 balls, Dez was winning. Because remember, he had three straight years of over 1,200 yards receiving. He did. Now he has yet to reach 1,000 yards in any of the previous three seasons. Yep. Because athleticism starts to go, and he doesn't have a fallback pitch. Yep. I still say LeBron can play at this offensive level for age 34, 5, 6, and 7 for four more years. It Skip, that'll be year 19. Yet. Well, and also remember, he's played 235. Yeah! Seasons, so it's essentially, basically, an extra three seasons. Seasons. Yeah. That's what Braun doing. Well, he spends $2 million a year on his body. Figure it out. I spend 200 huh? Dollars? 200 A month. No, nah, all these gym memberships, I got, I got, no, I got, no, no, no. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. I got about four hours. No, I spend like, probably like a stack. A month in membership. You know, I got to stay right. Me and old Braun, just in case he called me, you know, I got that jersey skip. Yeah. Bra- uh-huh. if, if, if Draymond start bullying him, don't be surprised. I might not be here one of these days. No mercy.
You know our next guest from Power, and mm. he's now working on a special project called Real to Real, which helps young black filmmakers. Amari mm. Hardwick, welcome to Undisputed. Mm. Thank you. Ghost is back. Where to you go? Yes, sir. It's been a minute, Welcome, Skip. it has been. Hey, Joy. Hello. I've known you for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and my brother. You mm. from my the day. Fellow, my fellow Southern brother. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you got Shannon recruited Shannon. to play football at Georgia. He actually did play yeah, football my, at Georgia. Yeah, my, my grades, you know. Yeah, it didn't work. <clears> yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> but, you know, it worked out all right for him, Skip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it did. It did. It did. Yeah. He slid into yeah, the Hall of Fame. Yeah, he slid in. He's a backdoor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Savannah State, I think Savannah State was glad, yeah. glad to have him. Yeah. Well, yeah. tell us about Real to Real. So Real to Real, uh, Joy, is this program that Gentleman Jack has sort of created. Uh, obviously, when I say sort of, what I mean is that they decided to be in front, of course, the um, the move to, I guess, help minorities have a voice, not only in the entertainment industry, but in terms of in, in their own lives and figuring out what direction they want to go. So it's specified to filmmakers in front of and behind the camera in terms of them putting out their work, actually having their dreams actualized, and we give $10,000 prize to uh, contestants who are basically competing with a 10 to 15 minute short about film from any genre, comedy, obviously, um, horror, thriller, drama, uh, whatever it may be. So we basically are just kind of inciting them to make sure that they tell good stories, quality stories, unique stories, uh, stories we ain't necessarily seen before the way that they're telling them and we give them some money and hopefully their dreams carry on from that. So mm -hmm. Gentleman Jack is has uh, partnered with me because I, I guess they knew a little bit about Blue Apple Poetry Network and Hmm. My desire is to always help people that look like me, trying hmm. to do whatever I'm doing. That sounds great, and what you've done on Power is great because season five premieres July 1st oh, on man. Stars. Thank you, Skip. Thanks, season brother. six is on the books, <laughs> and I don't know, there could be even a season seven, and we don't we, see this know, in television much anymore, no, this kind don't. of duration. That's true. We, uh, Skip and I were talking, obviously, uh, off, off camera, and we said, as it relates to sports, it's very similar. You don't see a lot of players being able to maintain, you mm -hmm. know, any level of performance for six years like you did. <laughs> uh, dear gifted tight end. Uh, I, I feel like Courtney Kemp and, and Curtis 50 Cent Jackson and Stars did a hell of a job of having their antenna be right mm -hmm. in terms of who they cast, in terms of who they delegated, and the timing, right? I think it's all timing in terms of if a show's gonna la last in the landscape of what television is at that particular time that the show is introduced to the world. And uh, I think they're, they were right on in terms of we need a Shakespearean type show with an urban backdrop and all the elements, the triumvirates of love quarrels and uh, a man who wakes up and takes people's heads off but is a doting father by night. So, <laughs> and sells a little drugs, a little yayo on the side, you know, but really wants to uh, follow a dream which is what we're talking about even in terms of, of these young kids with the Real to Real program. So it's been an interesting character to play. I would say less uh, Brian Cranston's brilliant, Walter White and rest in peace, mm -hmm. James Gandolfini's Tony Soprano. Yep. James St. Patrick is, is quite he's the in cat. There. Yep. Yeah, he's somewhere mm -hmm. in there. Yep. Well, Amari, let's talk about the NBA Finals, which get underway tonight. The yeah. Warriors are a huge favorite in the series. And LeBron will try to win his fourth ring. So far in the playoffs, LeBron is averaging about 34, 9, and 9. Mm -hmm. So how much of a shot do you give the Cavs to win this series? Well, for me, Joy, it's, it's uh, all about that game six, you know. Um, because if, of course, they make it to game six, then the shot that I give Cleveland is pretty strong. Hmm. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to be the one to bet against LeBron if they go to seven. Uh, but I think he's got to get to six. I think that should be his marker. Just just be able to win one. He's got to split, obviously. But, you know, the shooting that has come on as of late and obviously the the, the rhythm now that these guys have found, that being Steph and Clay and, and, and KD. Um, and, of course, you always have Draymond who fills up the stat sheets with so many different numbers. Mm -hmm. He's such a valuable component. He's actually the heartbeat, obviously, of the team. So... It's interesting, man. It's for, for LeBron, it's all of those other people. He needs at least two a night to give him about 15 to 19 to 20. He's still got to give us about 35 points, which is not necessarily innate to him. I still think of him as the great point forward of all times with more of a point guard mentality. So, but he's been great this year. He's kind of shown a level of killer that I never necessarily saw in him that we perhaps didn't see in Michael <clears throat> as we were growing up and watching Jordan do what he did. And, and even Kobe, even the assassin that, that Kobe is, I thought LeBron was often missing that thing. And, I feel like this year um, 
he's kind of found it, you know. He's kind of found it. So found it enough to get to a game seven? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, Iguodala uh, is a, is a major yeah. fact. If Iguodala is out, you know, then there's some things that can go in Cleveland and LeBron's favor. But if Iggs is back, I mean, they they really, if, if, if they win this year, obviously they're one of the great teams of all time. But it'll be interesting, you know. Celtics, you know, hats off to them for even doing what they did with such a novice green group. Obviously they wear the color green, but... They were, you know, very figuratively green. And without Hayward and, and, and our boy Kyrie, yep. I didn't necessarily give them the shot that I gave them, knowing that Cleveland still didn't have a great team. But LeBron is really the X factor, mm -hmm. the X of all Xs. So we'll, we'll see. You mentioned that, <clears throat> that LeBron is showing you an element of, that you didn't see. Maybe it's the killer instinct. Maybe it's the shot making. And you mentioned Jordan and Kobe. Mm -hmm. I think the thing is, is that, the four years in Miami, he had Wade. That was, yeah, and yeah. Wade would take the big shots. Yeah. And then when he got back to Cleveland, he had Kyrie. That's right. Jordan never had anybody to challenge him for the last shot. No. Neither did Kobe. No. So we get an opportunity to see LeBron in his most comfortable el element where he doesn't have to suppress who he naturally is to say, okay, D-Wade, take it. This That's year. right. Or Kyrie, you're the big shot. You're thought of as the big shot maker. That's right. Big shot taker. Go ahead. That's right. I think now we're seeing him at his most comfortable. So I could have been done this. Right. But to make everybody happy, to appease everyone, I'll let you take it. That's right. And you know what's ironic about that, Shannon? I don't think we talk about it enough. I believe that going to Miami was him going to the University of Miami. Right. I do. I think that this is a kid that wanted to get out of his hometown. Mm -hmm. um, he never went to college. Right. Even if Kyrie only put in a couple years in college, right. even if uh, Jason Tatum was only one year at the same college. Right. Mm -hmm. The reality is LeBron never really experienced that college thing. And Dwayne Wade was sort of his big brother on campus, so yep. to speak, you know. And so, I, you know, I would like for him to finish out his career at Cleveland mm -hmm. so that the, the departure or whatever it may be to Miami season. looked simply like it was, you know, you know yeah. a young brother wants to go to school somewhere right. and mm -hmm. experience what he experienced from Pat Riley, right. which, mm -hmm. you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't say the impact that Pat must have had on his. Mm -hmm. But Michael Jordan had freaking Dean Smith. And Phil Jackson. I mean, it, it, you know, so LeBron's, it took him a minute, right. but mm. he's one, done all one right quick with it. Point of order for my partner across the table. Scotty Pippen wanted to take <laughs> the last shot every night, and Michael just looked at him and said, You? No. Oh, wow. Me. Yep. Really? Me. Sorry. But, but don't but, give me that. But LeBron, but LeBron is so unselfish. Mm. Okay, fine. I'm secure in who yeah, I am. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of people yeah, won't yeah. pass that shot, Skip, because it makes him look small. Mm. They say, well, he's running, he's shying away from it. He don't want to take the shot. He'll pass to D-Wade, or he'll pass the ball. He'll want to pass the buck. Mm. He ain't passed no bucks this year. No, it ain't. Mm. Buzzer it, it, beater after buzzer beater no. after buzzer beater. Left and right, there's something, right? I think he pushed the button, and I mean, I get Skip's point. It was, you know, Michael was a different thing, Skip. Yeah. Michael, I think, wants to beat his kids in a game of chess at all times. That, that is children. correct. Michael's right. a different. Yep. They're wired totally different. Yep. It's, it's a different the, the truth is, LeBron is genuinely a nice guy, and I know Michael really well, and sometimes <laughs> off camera he can be, but at heart, he's not a nice guy. He when it comes throw. to basketball, he's not a nice no, guy. Michael's a killer. Yeah. They're wired different. He's a Shannon flat said. out killer. <laughs> a basketball <laughs> assassin. He is. So, speaking of taking last shots, I'm still not sure about Golden State's psyche chemistry. I'm still not sure they've figured out who the alpha is. Sometimes I think it's Kevin. Yeah. And then sometimes it's Steph. And yeah. Then, and then there are other nights when I say, wait, that Clay Thompson, I think he's the one with the backbone. I know. It's interesting because Draymond is really the alpha. Yeah. Right. So, the, the alpha, you know, sort of. Wait, as, the, as you yeah, mean, as I, the, as I, the I, guy. I got the, it. The big yeah. three that, that the ball released, you know, from 35 and back yeah. can go through the, through the hoop consistently. I, I don't think it's, uh, I think it's a team that's supposed to have Steph as that. I thought that from the start. But Clay, then Steph, Clay is a scrapper. Remember, who can Steph prove defense at times. welcomed. He embraced yeah. Kevin Durant. Yeah, no, he absolutely, yeah. absolutely embraced him. So yeah. I guess they're still trying to figure that out. Well, they're never going to figure it out because the simple so? fact they all can shoot the ball so well. It'd be interesting to see if they took 50 shots from three, who would actually win mm -hmm. from around. So if you just move the ball around, Katie, Steph, and Clay. What are the stakes? Oh, that's a good one, Skip. Yeah. Yes, do. Yeah. What'd you what, say, Joy? What case of doing? But here, but but see, the thing is, when these guys play skip, it's more than because when we played, when I was in the NFL, it was more than about money because we all had money. It was pride, it's about right? pride. Yeah. See, I would bet ten thousand dollars worth of Buffalo nickels 
or five thousand dollars worth of Susan B. Anthony's. Because see, I want you to go to the bank yep. and explain why you getting ten thousand dollars worth of Buffalo <laughs> nickel. Ego. I lost Try the bet, Shannon Sharp. <laughs> so what is it that's gonna <laughs> put the guys like okay? Because you know maybe that's you funny. have to dress up a right. certain way. Yeah. yeah. Cut your hair, make them all right, do a right, do right, something, do something that's yeah, going to yeah, come. Yeah. It's pride. You want his pride. Skip, all these guys are making 15, 30 million dollars a year. So what's 100,000 up? To that to, to that point, you and Skip's point, Michael was only making 3 million dollars. Right. He didn't get the better parts of 30 million not. until the last last part, the no. last 2 years. These guys are making a lot of money. And by the way, Michael willingly took Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, he yeah. didn't fight about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We, and that's, that's you know what, that. Skip? And that's what we're seeing with a lot of these guys because of the shoe money. Yeah. And people are like, well, why would Kevin Durant? Well, he's got $300 million from Nike. LeBron has got a billion from right, Nike. Right. So you got these guys making more money than a lot than basically every year except the last two years Jordan ever made in his career. That's it that's it makes the decision to take less money and go pair with someone right. than, you know, just say here. easier decision. Which, right. By the way, it brings up the point you're constantly criticizing LeBron's lack of help when he insists year after year on taking the max when he makes God knows how much off the basketball court, yeah. and if he would take half of the max, I maybe he could that. add a better player. Well, he said, he said, I might be willing to do that if you pass that savings on alone to the fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And say the ticket price is half off, yeah, yeah, or yeah. the concession is yeah, half yeah. off. But you raise their ticket price and raise the concession price while I give you a discount. I ain't going to be able to do that. Now, that's <laughs> ironic because... <laughs> Uh, Shannon, to me, Skip, mm -hmm. makes a great point. And, and in terms of what we know and we see with Kaepernick, yeah. there is an activist spirit behi behind a lot of, uh, a lot of yeah. athletes, but not enough. So when I say a lot of athletes, the activist spirit, perhaps Le LeBron has is the one. spirit. Oh, They're yeah. They're not activating on the spirit. No, nope. They might go to sleep going, I think I should do more. Okay, Grandma said I should do more, but I don't necessarily know if they're doing that. LeBron is, has kind of stood up and said, I, I got some feelings about some things. I feel a kind of way, and you know, and he's so the first. That's a great point that yeah. you make about that. He's one, he's probably the first, especially basketball skip, that will openly speak about certain issues. A lot of guys would shy away from. They didn't want to touch that because LeBron got 20 sponsors, and all of them, a lot of them are Fortune 500, and these are issues that they don't really they don't talk about, I and let alone they they, yeah, they brand agree. spokesmen right. talking about it. But he has no problem. Yep. I got a problem with this, and he'll let he'll let you know, and then explain to, to the sponsors. Yeah. No mercy. Kevin Durant is favored to repeat as the finals MVP according to Odd Shark. He's averaging almost 30 points per game this postseason after scoring over 30 in every game of last year's finals. Steph Curry has the second best odds, followed by LeBron. So, Shannon, what are Durant's chances of winning finals MVP? Well, considering he's the best player, and if their team was to win, normally that's what occurs. Now, there have been anomalies, Skip. You know, Andre Iguodala won it. Mm -hmm. um, Cornbread Maxwell won he it did. over Larry Bird, mm -hmm. when clearly Bird was their best player. But more times than not, the best player wins that award. Um, so I'm going to give Kevin Durant an 80% chance because I believe if they were to win, Kevin Durant's going to win this award. And I, and I, I, I see how they have it stacked. Uh, Steph Curry is, is, is number two. Now, Steph hasn't had – I mean, we keep saying Steph hasn't played well, but if you look at his number last year, he damn near averaged a triple-double. He was 20, what, 26, 27, 8, 9, and 8. And that's what he gave you over a five-game game stretch. But because Kevin Durant was so spectacular with 35, 35, 9, and 6, or 35, 9, and 5, Skip, I don't know if Kevin Durant has never not scored 30 points in an NBA Finals game. Because remember when they lost 5-1 to uh, uh, Miami, I still think he averaged 30 in that series. So he's played, what, 10 games? And he's averaging 30 over those. So... He averages 30. He's going to win that award, Skip. So mm. he's special. I mean, they don't have no, they don't have an answer for him. You can't let Braun, and I don't believe Kevin Durant will start. He might. I mean, they might put a, a Shaggy in the lineup and let Shaggy try to, you know, try to tear. But I don't see how Kevin Durant is going to play LeBron straight up and still be able to give you that effort. They might because they still got Clay and, and uh, uh, Steph to shoulder some of the scoring load. But if they were to win this, I feel very comfortable in saying 35. Mm is going to win the MVP. I'm not comfortable in saying that. I still, as I told you as we started the show, I got a funny feeling about this series. It's going to go very unpredictably through seven games. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to suggest that I think LeBron is going to be so dynamic in this series, in part because I don't think there's going to be Iguodala for, for maybe much of the series, if okay. not all of the mm -hmm. series that I think we could see for the first time since 1969 
a player from the losing team win the MVP? No, Skip. If he did, if he didn't get it, averaging 36, 13, and nine, he's not getting it in this one. And because remember now, the year Jerry won it, that was the first year they instituted the MVP. The logo, Jerry yeah, yeah, West. Yeah, Jerry West. And by the way, that was a seven-game series that Jerry West Lakers lost at home oh. in Game Seven, and that was a game in which he had 42, 13, and 12. Mm -hmm. And the media said. That's just too good. Yeah. We got to give it to a player on the losing and, team. You know, Bill Russell tells the story is that they had the balloons. They were ready to drop them. So the balloon, they're playing the game. So the whole while they start the game, the balloons are up there. And Bill said, we wanted to make sure they stayed up there. Yeah, and it was 108-106 <laughs> Celtics at the end of the game. And Jerry West for the series had averaged 38 points a game. I see that for LeBron this time. I would give Steph a better chance of finally breaking through because obviously he is a two-time regular season right. MVP who has not won an MVP in the finals. Right. And it just feels like it would be his turn to win it. Mm -hmm. It felt like last year that Kevin Durant came in with a chip the size of the basketball world <laughs> on his shoulder. And I still am in awe of what Kevin pulled off in the finals last year because the basketball world, outside of obviously mm -hmm. Warriors Nation, was rooting against him. Right. They wanted him to fall flat on his face after leaving Russell Westbrook high and dry. Mm -hmm. And instead, he rose and he shone. And he hit that shot of shots right in LeBron's face that just, just turned the whole series around. And what was that, game three? Game three. He also hit a baseline jumper. It was just huge in that game. He hit two big clutch shots in that game. I just didn't see it coming. Those are huge turnaround. Look at this. Right in of course, LeBron, he should have just – you, you got to get up in him. Get up well, in him. Well, that's not what the, the – the, the, he likes to check. He likes to set. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, LeBron's like – and I agree. The only the, – the reason why I agree, Skip, is that a two-point shot only ties you. A three-point shot gives them the lead. Yep. So I would have forced them, okay, you want to go around me and get a dunk? Yeah. So be it. But I'm not going to give up because it's, it, so, it's funny how that works, Skip. It's like you've held the lead this long, and it gets late in the ball game, and that t team takes the lead. It's really hard for the team that's led the entire time mm -hmm. to come back. It, take, it zaps you. It's like, now nah, here we go. Mm -hmm. And that's why I felt that Jeff Green made the biggest shot on Sunday. Because when Boston got that lead, what, 71-72, yep. and then he comes right back down and hits the three-pointer, makes it 74-72, that was really, I think, the turning point of the ball right. game. So, again, against Houston, Kevin Durant, the reigning finals MVP, mm -hmm. went 11 straight quarters of, by his standards, shockingly pathetic basketball, starting with the fourth quarter of game four when he just lost it. Right. Made a bad decision at the end of the game. Should have gone up and shot it from about 20 feet mm -hmm. or at least attacked the basket and tried to get to the free throw line. And he passes to Clay, who's already hobbled as he ran away from the basket down the baseline. And it was a bad idea, and it seemed to knock Kevin completely for a loop for the next mm -hmm. two games, which would be game five and six. And then game seven's fourth uh, first half, he was just a disaster. Right. I couldn't recognize him. He looked like a no-confidence mess to me. And he looked distracted, he looked troubled, he looked completely out of sync. Mm -hmm. And he bounced back to his credit in the second half of Game 7, but he was going along for a pretty good ride with Steph and Clay because everybody was hot right. and he joined right in. And that's what right. happens. Mm -hmm. One of these guys get hot and then yep. the other guy's like, oh, his oh, shot going in, go. now boom, boom, boom. Yep. And, but Skip, this is what make these guys so special. That's what make the elite guys so special mm -hmm. is because they can have an off quarter, they can have an off half. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know, you look up and the dude has 35. Yeah. You look at you look at KD and you're like, dude, he was playing terrible the first half. Yeah. But the guy ends up with 34 points. You're like, well, what happened? Well, he goes five or seven from uh, from the three in the second half. Or Clay, Clay was in foul trouble, but he comes in after sitting down, been out for like six minutes or ten minutes of real time, mm -hmm. and then boom, boom, boom. And the next thing you know, you're like. How did dude get 19 points when he was in foul trouble? Had three fouls in the first three minutes of the ball game, mm -hmm. and then you know you know Steph, Steph get hot. He starts shimmy and joy. He start that mouthpiece start hanging, mm -hmm. mouthpiece hanging out his mouth. He, mm -hmm. he start doing all that. Oh, it's over. Joy, it's over. Mm -hmm. it, you got it all down. Yeah, yeah, it, it, uh, man. You, you got that in blazing. In yeah, your yeah, sight. man. He starts <laughs> shimmy. Nightmare, right? Yeah, it is. It you is. Dream I, about that. <sighs> wow. Because they got them three. Like I said. Mm -hmm. I believe, I feel comfortable, and I hope we have Magic Johnson. I want to ask him. I believe they have three of the top ten shooters of all time. Now, Magic been around the game. He played the game, and so he would know. I would want to ask him, Magic, do you think right now 
that the, uh, the Warriors mm -hmm. have three of the top ten shooters, it would be hard-pressed for me to, him, to hear him say no. Mm -hmm. I don't believe he would say it. Well, Kyle Korver's in that conversation. We got one guy, you got three. You gonna talk? Okay, can we? He is in that. He is a. He yeah. is a big time shooter. Can I trade you, Kyle Korver, yeah. for uh, uh, Clay? No, not on defense. No, no, no. I want Kyle. No, no, no. Clay ain't even really got to play defense like he be playing now. Uh, I know he will, but I just want. I just want him on us. Can you? Can I get? Can I get it for? There are nights Kyle Korver shoots three point shots like free throws. Yeah. Where I just say, well, that's good. It leaves his hand. I can just say, that's in. I mean, he has All a quick right. release also. Yeah. But, but class ridiculous. Skip. No, the ball, the ball, I mean, how does he? I mean, it's like simultaneous. He's catching the ball. The ball's coming in, and all in one motion, he's going up shooting a shot. Mm -hmm. And then you got seven foot. He's rising up now. Kevin Durant's jumping. He rises up over you. The ball's at a ten uh, at a ten foot apex. What you gonna do with that? Mm -hmm. You need a broomstick to block, to block that shot. Okay, but in the end, what is he made of, Kevin Durant? Again, I'm as a big fan. I've been his biggest fan since he was at Texas, but I'm trying to be a, a, an objective fan also because last year he had something to prove and he proved it. This year, as the reigning finals MVP, he has something to hold, to maintain. Can he do that? Yeah. Or is he just happy with what he did no, last year? No, he strikes me as a guy that wants to prove that it wasn't a fluke. And he knows on the biggest stage, the guy that across from him is universally regarded as the best player. That is correct. And he feels that the more times he gets an opportunity to go against that guy and more of an opportunity to beat that guy, the better his chances is is catching and passing him. Yet, I know Kevin watches the show, and obviously I've been sitting over here beating this table about how he's become the best player on the planet, and then he wasn't the best player on the planet against Houston in the Western Conference Finals. So now he has a chance to reprove that. And I don't know. Sometimes I think... He was it's just a lot of pressure. He was never. I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. You said he, he was the best player. He was never the best player on the planet. I can say that phones and I can say that cups an iPhone, Joy. That don't make it true. Skip Bailey. Oh, I'm beating this table, Kevin. There. Nobody thought. Hello. Yeah, ain't nobody calling oh. you. That's LeBron on <laughs> oh, line one. Oh, my, that's that, 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 that's, Le, that's huh? LeBron on line one. Really? Yeah. I said, hey, mm. don't ever say that again, Skip mm. Bayless. You know as long as long. Okay. Well, here we go again. We have the NBA Finals, the biggest stage in the sport, and we have Kevin Durant versus LeBron James, which is why I don't ever get tired of Golden State versus Cleveland because it, it just doesn't get better than this. The rating says no also. Because well, you look at, look at Cleveland in Game 7, you look at the Houston Rockets and, and Golden State on, on, that, on TNT, the rating says and you have an opportunity. We're going to talk about it later. If you don't, if you get tired of seeing them, why don't y'all do something about it? These are the 28 teams. Y'all right. do something about it. Okay. So now Kevin has a chance to reprove himself as, to me, the best player on the planet. This is where all your money is made. The marbles and all the pot is pushed right into the middle, right? No. This is yeah, it. Yeah, stop. You need to stop there. No, they're didn't start it. Okay. So, so in other words, are you telling me that Nick Foles is better than Tom Brady? No. Okay, he won five, he won two bowl no, MVP. But he was the backup quarterback. Uh, he won the, all I know, you said he won finals MVP, so no, he's but, but wait a second, Tom Brady can't play defense. I, I got, hey. He can't play. He can't play receive. I wish he could He can't play receive either, huh? Well, I know, but Malcolm Butler can play whoa, defense. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second, Malcolm Butler wasn't even in the game. Why was that? How did Nick Foles put 41 on Bill Belichick? Well, how, I, well tell me this. How can he throw for 500 yards with a cut thumb, but he can't catch a pass with a cut thumb? Well, who? He doesn't get paid to catch pass. Yeah, he does. He get paid to help us win. And the ball was thrown and, completely over his head. I don't think Shannon Sharp could have caught that pass. Man. Especially Man, Shannon Sharp would have caught that thing one hand. Joey had been in on Tussie rolling. Mm -hmm. Tussie roll. Mm -hmm. yeah, Tussie roll. I don't think oh, so. Oh, that's what I've been doing. Tussie so, rolling. I don't dance. No, I had in the Super Bowl, I had to. I'm going to root for Kevin Durant to win MVP, but I'm going to say Steph's got, he's my odds on to win the no. MVP. No. Yeah? No. And I'm not going to rule out LeBron being the first since 69. No. If, if, if they don't, I said that. If they don't give it to him when he averaged 36, 13, and 9, he ain't getting it. I don't know. Skip, think about it. Let that sink in, Skip. 36 point. 13 rebounds, well, 9 what assists. What if the big three for Golden State all have bad games along the trail? Well, they're going to have to have five or six of those bad games, mm -hmm. all of them simultaneous, mm -hmm. because one or two of them can pull it, pull it away. No mercy. Sixers general manager Brian Colangelo told Yahoo Sports that someone's out to get him after the allegations that he created five burner Twitter accounts. Colangelo admitted to using one account but denied the others. Now there's speculation that his wife may have been involved because her phone number appears to be connected to the accounts. The Sixers issued a statement yesterday that they have started an independent investigation. So, mm. Shannon, mm. now that there's new information, what's your take on the situation now? Doesn't change anything for me. Mm. So I guess his wife is out to get him because the problem that I have, Skip, is that 
He pillow talked. He divulged private medical information with his wife because how else would she know? She doesn't go to work every day. She doesn't know what's in those files. Mm -hmm. And he's talking. He's divulging information, lying in bed with his wife. And I guess some of this, while he's doing a remi uh, uh, media sessions, these tweets are going out. So I guess he's tra say, trying to say, his, I guess he's headed for a divorce. I guess he's saying his wife is out to get him. That's the only thing I can conclude, Skip. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter to me because private information was divulged. How else would she know? Why does she know that uh, Jaleel Okafor flunked the physical? Mm -hmm. Why does she need to know that? Why does she needs to? Why does she need to know what's going on in the day to day in Philly? Makes no difference to me. Hmm. He's betrayed the trust of his players. I don't know how he gets that back. I would be shocked if he kept his job. Hmm. Yet, is it possible that she was posting for him on the burner accounts through her phone? Is it yeah. possible oh, just it... to give him plausible deniability that he was telling her what to post yeah. while he was doing a press conference about Joel Embiid and then to to have her post his actual, the essence Thoughts. of what he wanted to say that she would post through her phone to just, again, give him an escape hatch. That's possible. I don't know what Very happened. likely, because what do we say, Skip? Anytime a, 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 a significant other or a parent or someone close to a player says something, everybody assumes they're well, speaking that's... for said player. Yeah. Well, that's being coming out, so uh, is she speaking for said husband? Because there's no other way she would know that information without him. Hmm. So he says someone's out to get him, to your point. But the truth is somebody tipped off the ringer who broke the story. They were out to expose him, not to get him, but just to expose what, what he, he was, was doing. doing. Yeah, Correct. because it, he admitted he was presiding over one burner account, right? Yes. And then when the ringer hit the Sixers with, well, wait a second, we know about two, then meet within like the hour, then the other three that they were monitoring shut down or they went Made private. Went private. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did he? was he in cahoots with his wife? Somebody knew right away that there were five, that, that the, the other three needed to go private. So I, I don't know what happens except that in the end, the brunt of the responsibility must be borne by the general manager. Correct, the absolutely. The Sixers. And I still say Bridges got burned to maybe Embiid and other players, maybe Markel Fultz, yeah. that I'm not sure can be rebuilt. Yes, yeah. because so, I guarantee you his wife did not see, see Markel Fultz sitting in a chair shooting <laughs> or laying, lying on his back yeah. shooting a basketball. Yeah. That pertinent information like that had to be witnessed by someone and... Hmm. I ain't saying you saw it, but I'm just saying you told her. Mm -hmm. You yep. told it. Hey, Skip, is bro Skip is broken. Once trust is it's broken. And, and B, Skip, I know B says until proven otherwise, and then he turned around and tweet what he tweeted. He doesn't believe him. He doesn't believe him. And he said, if this is true, it's really bad. And that's how they all think of it, is really bad. Yeah, I don't... And even though you are leaning toward LeBron staying put, staying home in Cleveland... I would lean toward LeBron, and the odds are, the Vegas odds are, that he will wind up in Philadelphia. Minus I Angelo? I, I don't think he's going to wind up playing for this guy because I just don't think LeBron, of all people, would trust this guy after that came out. He, he, you, he, you trusted, gotta, uh, he trusted old Gilbert. Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you could trust Gilbert after what he said, you trust anybody. But, uh, too weirdly, to Gilbert's credit, he was very public about how he felt he about yes. LeBron. Yeah. He was very upfront about well, it. That, I ain't worried about what he said publicly. And again, you make, what do you, say peace, privately? You, you make peace with a guy because you want to go home. Yeah. At least it's your home area, right? Yeah. And right. you're going to give me right of first refusal to buy the team. Maybe. Maybe. I, I'm with you on that. I mean. We ain't coming well, back to Miami. When, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, when Durant did it, it was a bad look, but he's a player. Yeah. So, the burner you know, account. Yeah, it's a little different when you're supposed to be the one who's running the, you know, mm. the business side of all of this. Yep, it feels like he is flailing. I believe Katie got more reputation. burner accounts too. I think he got more. Yeah. He'd be monitoring me. <laughs> really? You? you? He's after you now. No mercy. Dak Prescott will enter the 2018 season with no Jason Witten and no Des Bryant, but Dak still seems confident. Recently, he said, quote, I don't know if any team in the league necessarily needs a number one receiver. It's all about getting the ball out, spreading the ball around and keeping the defense on its toes. Shannon, do you agree with Dak? Skip, I really don't know how to answer this because in, a, in one sense, I get what he's trying to say. 
you know, I have confidence in all my guys. You know, the guy that gets open, that's who's going to get the ball. But then again, that's kind of like a backhanded compliment. Alan Hearns said, what the hell do you think I am? Cole Beasley say, hey, your boy, I I'm your guy. So let me get this straight, Joe. I want to make sure I'm getting this straight. Now, nah, straight. <clears throat> Dak Prescott is a third-year guy saying we don't really need a number one receiver. Tom Brady got a number one receiver in Gronk. Aaron Rodgers has a number one receiver in Adams. Drew Brees has one in Michael Thomas. A big Ben has one in A.B. Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. But a third-year guy. And we talk about guys that's won MVPs, been to Super Bowls. They have one. They need one. But Dak doesn't. Mm. Well, y'all go, y'all go in places, Skip. Mm. Oh, Dak Prescott, he don't need no number one. And oh, Tom Brady need one. And Rodgers and Breeze. Oh, they all go in places. Y'all ain't going nowhere. What exactly do you want the third-year quarterback to say publicly? I, I'm I'm dead without a number one receiver. And, and, we have no chance without a number and one receiver. And you know, receiver. he probably he taking a shot at he took a shot at Dez too, Skip. How? God. Say, we don't need no number one. Because we ain't had one in the last three years, so why we need one now? That's what he tried to say, Skip. Does he have a number one? No. No. They don't have a they don't have a they don't have a Wait, uh, does he have a number two? No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does he have a number three? I'm not even sure of that. Well, Cole Beasley said we huh? ain't got no elite quarterback either. So now what you want me to do about that? He didn't say that. Oh yeah, Cole Beasley, put that in a wrap. No, because you yeah, put it around. That. Huh? You mean M&M? Yo. Cole, yeah. No, no, coleslaw. Yeah. Coleslaw. Yeah, he's up with some cabbage and mayonnaise. Yeah. That's all he is. Okay. He's rapping. So, I told you from the start, I did not love Jerry Jones' offseason moves because there weren't very many of them. <laughs> I really did not love the Dallas Cowboys draft because it was pretty shaky, if not pathetic, yeah. in the end. okay. And yet... I still say Dak will be a little better just by subtraction because he will no longer fall again and again into the Des Bryant trap. I agree right? with that. I agree with that. He will not force the football no. to 88 anymore because there's no more 88. He used the phrase I've been using on the show for weeks, which is he will spread the ball. I believe that's what he's best at. He's not Tom Brady, but he is, to me, Brady-esque in that he's best at speed reading and finding the most open receiver. And Tom Brady has made stars out of little guys that you don't have a lot of use for. Well, I right? like those, those guys are good. They got he got yeah. the number one receiving core. Yeah. That's what they said. I, I don't Yo, that. you we just did oh yeah, you stop skip baby, we just did you you gonna say they don't you talking about you don't have any idea. Well, we just I, did I the top. I laughed I laughed out loud at that when I saw that. What? You lost Brandon Cooks and Danny Amendola and all of a sudden you're telling me you got the number one receiver. You got Julian Edelman. You say you love Lil Julian. Well, I, I do. But and you say you like him better than Julio. He wrecked his knee and I don't know if is he gonna be the same? With the medicine. have his quickness back? Wes Welker got his back. I don't see any reason why he wouldn't. No, really. Oh, but let me ask you a question. Malcolm what? Mitchell, you're you're saying he's going to be a go-to receiver. Came, came a big. What came about Gronk? Big. What about the, what about that old Gronk? Okay, I guess you you got Gronk. I'll give you that. Does that make him number one over? Yeah, yeah. old Gronk. Gronk, two people. Okay, so look what he has to work with. So what you have to do is look at every glass is half full. Did Alan Hearns have one big year in Jacksonville? He yeah. did. He caught a thousand yards worth of balls. And guess what? He caught him from Blake Bortles. So maybe this will be an upgrade that will bring him back to life. Well, maybe, maybe Alan Hearn said you a downgrade from Blake Bortles. He didn't say that. I said, what if he had him? Well, he didn't. <laughs> and Deontay Thompson had a couple of big, he had one big game in Chicago against oh, Green Bay. So now, so now you're I'm just saying he's got he showed you on an NFL stage against their arch rival, the Green Bay Packers, he had a hundred yard game. And then he had a hundred yard game for the Buffalo Bills last year against Tampa. But he did it. So, now, so I say, okay, he can run a little bit. Tavon Austin, can he revert to West Virginia, Tavon? I no, don't know. No, no. Yeah. So let me get this right. The dude yeah. was out here with, uh, what's the head coach's name at L.A.? The L head coach. Which head McVay. coach? McVay. Sean, Sean McVay. Yeah, Sean McVay. Sean yeah. McVay, Skip, with his imagination. Yeah. He couldn't no, find he a way no. to get Tavon Austin. He but you believe Scott Linehan, Scott Linehan I will? I don't know. It's something. You it's hoping. better than nothing. And by the way, speaking of Cole Beasley, Two years ago, from Dak Prescott, he caught 75 balls and was considered the best slot receiver in the game. As Edelman. Just pure, but Edelman will split out and play wide out. He'll do everything. What Jarvis Landry going to do? Well, I, I just – listen, Cole Beasley, again, I'm quoting the great Troy Aikman, he said he was just uncoverable in the slot two years ago by two guys. But last year, the ball was going to 88. He's working on his rap album. Uh, well, I don't know what happened, but he is capable. And once upon a time – how about just last year, Terrence Williams, again – not the biggest T wheel. Oh, he got problems. He's got problems. I mean, he, he falling off a miss, bicycle. He might I mean, miss somebody some games. stole his car. Okay, they wrecked it. it. Called him. He got on the bike. 
fell over the bike. Did you see that video? Mm -hmm. I saw it. I, I mean, saw how you it, okay? I can't defend it, but I can also tell you, did you watch the Kansas City game at Dallas last year? Yeah. Because I thought that was the best game my Cowboys played all year. That was a tour de force game against Alex Smith and company. And little T. Will caught, what, nine balls for 141 yards. Well, Is he capable of doing well, that? Well, well, Skip. And then he hurt his foot and, and needed surgery. And then I remember after that game, you started calling him T. Won't. I did. He, yeah, and so well, now I, you... I started calling him after the Green Bay game yeah. when he, a ball went right through his hands to Demary so, Randall, who's having his problems up in Cleveland right now, but he waltzed into the oh, end zone. So, so now, let me, so now you, you love T. Will, you love Kobe. I, I have he, no choice. I, I don't know. I love Michael Gallup, the third-round pick out of Colorado it, State. It, well, he, unless he's doing a poll, that's the only Gallup I know, Joy, mm -hmm. and he ain't doing any polls, so I don't know anything about Michael him. Michael Gallup last year at Colorado State had six games over 100 yards and two games over 200 yards. I don't know. I don't know. Potential, so, maybe. Is he, is he playing to see you, Buffaloes? No. They don't have home coming in the NFL. He's playing. He, he had 263 against Nevada, but I don't think Nevada's on the Cowboys. Exactly. Well, I'm not sure, but so, maybe. Hold on. And you saw the poll. They listed your receivers as mm. way on I, down there. Well, they should like, be buddy. listed. I'm glad. Don't have any expectations, and we're going to shock the world. So, no, you there got is some expectations. one secret weapon. And you never bring him up, but you should be because he's oh, going to haunt you and you're going to have bad dreams about him. Rico Gathers out of Baylor University, out of New Orleans originally, where he was the state of Louisiana's Mr. Basketball. Can you believe that? Mr. Basketball. Look at this. Huh. Six, I'll, I'll, wait, wait, 6'6", 285? That's bigger than Shannon Sharp. Yeah, way bigger. That. That, that's Gronk size. Did you see that? Well, watch this. This is Rico Gathers. Oh. He ran right by a DB. Well, what's going on with that? Oh, my gosh. Huh. Secret weapon. If you don't mind me asking, can you? He you... had a terrible head injury, suffered in training camp last year that cost him the whole year. What did you know? How do you know he's going to be healthy? I don't. He says he's okay. We'll see. He a neurologist now. He was okay. Mr. Basketball. Okay. You better be Not careful Mr. Medicine. what you're saying. He, listen, Rico Gathers could be a star in this league. I saw star potential. I saw monster potential. So he might you be. You saw that in the preseason. And I've seen several reports saying the Cowboys are just sort of laying in the weeds with Rico Gathers that they think he is going to be their savior next year of their receiving core. He will be the next Jason Witten because he has he, he can obviously do things Jason couldn't do, right? Yeah. 6'6", 285, runs, catches, jumps. Wow. Okay. I mean, you, huh? you, you know what's You're getting scared. You don't get, you get, okay. Skip, you can't get high on your own supply. You huh? starting to, you starting to buy these Cowboys. Uh -huh. I mean, you going to talk, your, you going to talk yourself into losing about 12 cases of Sprite. Uh, I don't know about I do. my own supply. Yeah, I, your I don't own, have my own you, supply. That's your supply to Cowboys. Oh, okay. And you getting high on them right now. You talking yeah. yourself into a butt cutting. I, I am not. I just, I know I have a quarterback and I know he spreads the ball best. That's what he does best. He takes what he ain't no defense. Carson Wentz, but he okay. Oh please! He ain't walking this, to him. This guy's accurate. This guy's poised. Who? Uh, it, you know what, Skip? I know you love this stat right here. Mm -hmm. I think the stat is Joy. Let me out. Q B R. Yep. If you don't mind me asking, who led the NFL last year in Q B R? Mm. <laughs> he didn't have to play the last <sighs> couple of games. Oh, like he was going to lose skill. He, he might have lost it. No, don't do it. Well, guess what? Dak Prescott lost the QBR championship the year before, the last game at Philadelphia. That cost him yeah. the championship because they mailed it in. Because when you throw a bunch of incompletions, yeah, that go against no, you. No. Or walk it to him. Didn't play enough. Or walk it to him. Or walk it to him. Yeah. But Long handoff. Dak, Where do you think Nick Foles got that from? Dak Prescott doesn't have a backup quarterback who won the Super Bowl. In place of Dak. Well, Philly, Philly what does that say for you? Philly doesn't have a starting quarterback that would have got him to the Super Bowl. Huh. All I know is that Dak Prescott finished third in QBR and then last year plummeted as you gave him an F for the year to fourth. My guy, I don't know where terrible. my guy finished the year before, year. but he was just fooling around. Huh. He said, I'm going to get serious, and then he led it. So who has the best average QBR of the, their first two years in the league? Is it Dak or is it Carson Wentz? My guy finished second recall, in the MVP. And last uh, two years ago as a rookie, Dak, um, uh, Carson Wentz had a, what was it, like 20th QBR? Wasn't he 20th? Or worse, 25th? See, I told you and all the evaluators mm. tried to tell you oh. that they asked Carson to do more than Dak. Oh. So when they remove, remove that hedge, yeah. you remember what we said? You say, if, if you remove the hedge, he was talking to him, Skip. You remember? Mm. Joel. Mm. He said, if you, the devil came and he said, mm. told, if you remove the hedge, he will curse his very maker. Mm -hmm. He refused to. Mm -hmm. And he was 
That's true. Replay with plentiful, bountiful Jordan. Like, oh, gave him tenfold what he had. Hmm. When they removed that hedge of 2 1, mm -hmm. Dak Prescott looked like a different mm -hmm. quarterback. My receiving core is the loaf of bread that will feed the masses. They ain't feeding you know that story? No. Nah, no, nah, I don't eat bread no more. I stopped eating bread. Okay, good for you. I'm going you know brain what? free. I, when I gave this breakdown, <laughs> this actually sounded good to me. I, I think oh, yeah, that's the potential. Yeah, you got that, your own supply. Uh. Them, them, you know what, Skip? Them Cowboys, yeah. they go, that, they, that's, that's, that's going to be your, your mm. downfall right there. Mm. That's how I'm going to get all. See that? See this right here? You're going to have to see that a whole lot next year, along with a whole lot of this. He's like, Lord, please don't let Z get in trouble. Mm. That's what he's doing. He's probably saying that. <laughs> that. But old Philly, Philly going to have a better record than y'all, too. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one.